I'm keeping this as a memento. I had a, what could only be described as a funny do a couple of nights ago, where I was just talking to Bill in, on Skype and I just, suddenly I'm, I'm talking and I'm, 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 I just become breathless. I'm like, I can't breathe. So I says, well, I'm going to have to go here, I'm going to have to end the call. And then I ends the call, I'm like, what do I do about this? And it's like, well, there's nothing you can do. Sharpness of breath, it was really bad. And it went on for hours. And it was, you know, it was bad. It was like, you've had an episode, an attack of something here. This is bad. Can't breathe. So, yesterday morning, I... Uh, Got a phone call from my mother. She was uh, she was plotting to like take me shopping, and I said, "Look, I've had this funny do overnight." And I explained to her what had happened. She says, "Well, you know, you're gonna have to go to the hospital. This is this isn't normal. You're gonna have to go to the hospital." And I says to her, "I says I don't want to go to the hospital." And she says, well, "What do you mean?" I says, "Look, you don't listen to me. They don't listen to me either." Um, I says to her, what happen is they'll go in, they'll um, check my blood pressure and they'll tell me that they think I'm suffering from heart failure. And they'll immediately turn up with a big handful of beta blockers and they'll want to put me, they're going to tell and they're going to say that you're going to now have to take these tablets for the rest of your life. My mum's like, yo, what? what? And I'm like, well, this is what happened 20 years ago. This is why I don't deal with the NHS. This is what ended my sales career. This is what saw me out of work. Uh, this is the black mark that that's on my record. Uh, the, the NHS, the people who told my employers that I was suffering from what they suspected was heart failure and that could just die any moment these people and it's like um, my blood pressure is just naturally high they've put me on a, a, a an ECG and they're saying well the ECG says there's there's likely a blockage or a problem I'm like if you take away that high blood pressure information does that ECG mean anything at all well no it doesn't it's normal but we can't ignore that you've got this high blood pressure. So they've said to me, they've said, look, they, they, the way they were framing it, I was to be held, kept in hospital for a few weeks. I would never have come out alive. It's a trap. For me, it's a trap. To go into a hospital like that is a trap because what all they do is they take me blood pressure and it says that I should be dead. And... It, uh, they look at me because I'm a I'm a sort of sweaty person. I'm a person who sweats easily, and they look at the person who sweats easily, and they look at the high blood pressure, and they say those those symptoms have, have heart failure. And I'm like, no, we've had this before. I was told, right, that I would be dead by the time I was 35, and that was the best case scenario. They were telling me I could drop down dead at any moment when I was in my mid 20s. Because of this, I my heart was destroyed. It was broken. It was just dying. So yesterday, goes through this rigmarole, explains my situation. And being disagreeable with the doctor, the doctor said, well, you being disagreeable proves you've got high blood pressure. I'm like, you're a mind reader, suddenly. I says, the reason why is you gaslighting me. And they're like, they've got me on a heart monitor and I'm getting more and more annoyed that they're not listening to me. And the heart monitors are going, bum, 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 bum. And I'm like, bloody hell, I can actually make this machine do whatever I want. If I decide I'm going to just start mouthing off in a great big NHS rant, this ECG machine is going to go, bum, 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 bum. I, I can control this machine, you know. And it's like, it, it, uh, me resting, so they found me resting heartbeat, right? 
and they've got an ECG for me and they've got this high blood pressure and it's like their machines are saying that I should be in agony and I'm not and they're saying yesterday I must have been asked 15 times are you sure you're not in acute are you sure you don't have acute chest pain because acute chest pain with the other symptom of what they're saying is the problem. Acute chest pain like in so much agony that I can't stand it. And they're like putting it to me that are you sure that as if I'm lying about not being in extreme pain. I'm just not, I'm sat there. They won't check my breathing really. They won't, they're not interested. Now, I've gone in there with this saying, this attack of breathlessness. So I'm, I'm along the lines of, right, asthma. My, I'm, my, my heart and stuff like that, it's not going to be in the best condition because of the life I've lived. It's not going to be in the best condition in the world. But that high blood pressure has been a constant my whole life. And as soon as the, the, uh, the NHS started taking everyone's blood pressure as a, as a we, well, we do it for everyone, it's a precaution. Ever since they started doing that, every time I go and see an NHS doctor, they just immediately ring the alarm bells and say, you're going to die. Why? It's like, why aren't you dead? I said, well, if NHS science can be believed, I should have been dead 15 years ago. I should have been dead 20 years ago. Because that's all you've got to tell me is, that, well, you're a dead man. So... I'm in Rochdale Infirmary for about five, six hours. They make it complete. They make it clear that they're expecting that I'm going to be staying for a few weeks. Yeah, but you can't stay here. Why? We don't have a cardiac unit. We have to either send you to Withenshaw or Bury. Okay, fine. So they don't say where you're going. And then the next thing you know, two ambulance staff have turned up. And then they have to right for their safety run exactly the same set of tests apart from the blood tests which they haven't got the they haven't got the results of the blood test back they didn't wait for the because i'm like well you've done all your testing now can i go home oh no 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 you're not going home we've got to manage this blood pressure all right no we need to get to the bottom of me it's breathing difficulty I'm having. It's like, you know, I think about maybe putting me on some kind of like maybe nebulizer or something, uh, rule out that I haven't got a chest infection, like, um, you know, pneumonia. No, 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 we, 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 can't, we can't even tackle that until we've managed your blood pressure, right? And then when they put me on the... Um, the beta blockers for it. I know this because it's already been done. It's just history is going to repeat itself again. They put me on the blood block, the the uh, the blood thinners, the beta blockers, and it makes no difference at all the blood pressure. But it just means that I just burst into tears all the time because I can't handle my emotions anymore because they put me on adrenaline blockers. So at any time, there's no adrenaline activity going on in my brain. So when it's appropriate for there to be adrenaline. There isn't any, and I'm just bursting into tears all the time. Can't handle myself. Just crying. They made me cry. Cost me everything. People see you weak and attack, and no, there's nothing you can do to stop it. There's nothing you can do because the thing you should reach for, which is anger, like who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Not available to you anymore. You just burst into tears. So, I go to the doctors, I go to the hospital, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I haven't been there since 10, and they're moving me to Bury, and all of the tests are being repeated in the ambulance before I go, and the paramedics are weighing up the same information, but they're listening to me, and the the, uh, the you know the, the head the, the chief of the two medics in the in the ambulance she's like this guy doesn't know you need to go to hospital he's stable 
because I've been talking to him. He's stable. Not in pain. And it's like him not being in any pain, it, it, it just doesn't check out. It, he's not suffering heart failure. You see, I should be dead now. They, they made me sign paperwork when I decided to walk out at like last night at 10 o'clock at night. When I decided to walk out, they're like making me sign papers saying, well, you probably won't make it through the night. And yeah, here I am. And what did I do when I left? I went home, made myself a sandwich and went straight to bed. And I'm up this morning, bright and early, six o'clock in the morning, just tired, needed to sleep, and he just needed me bed. And it's like, the situation I was left in yesterday, come evening, is no food. They don't, they don't feed patients anymore in hospital. All there is is these, like, thin, tasteless white bread sandwiches, of which I was given one from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, one small week drink of um, decaffeinated coffee and a glass of water is all in the day I got. And because I'm attached to ECG machines, I can't move. So they've got me, my, you're staying over in hospital, right? Related to a chair attached to an ECG machine in a corridor. And I'm onto these doctors, I'm saying, look, is this the situation here? You say you're keeping me over. I'm going to become a, a fucking permanent resident here because you've decided I'm dying. Again. We're doing the whole repeat performance of why I don't bother with you guys anymore. Mike, can you arrange for me, because I'm staying over, not to have to sit in this like plastic school style chair because you, you refuse to treat my back, right? As the NHS, because you want to protect the NHS. You won't treat me back, but you won't give me somewhere comfortable to sit, hooked to your machine all day and all night. You won't give me, and you won't. I'm supposed to be staying, but you haven't got a bed for me and you don't know when you'll have a bed for me. So I'm like, it, am I going to be sat in that chair till four and five o'clock in the morning waiting for a hospital bed? I'm like, you think that yesterday I had a massive heart attack, right? And you want to keep me in hospital, but you're stressing me. You're not listening to me. You're forcing pills down me where I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking this. Oh no, they're not them. And then, you know, I was there to you. You're like, they put me on the fucking blockers again. You sat there, you're like, they've put me on the blockers again. It's like they've, they've doped me up. Oh, you should have seen the performance you get from them guys when you say you're going home. Bloody hell. It got, I got, I had some, I had some fucking kid of about 25. Um, I says to him, look, it's like, you're giving me nothing to eat. I'm, 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 I'm a bit, I'm, I'm weak. I'm, I, I feel terrible. And it's because you're starving me. And you're not giving me a, I've not had a drink or anything. People just walk in and I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. And you're like, oh no, we're, we're too busy. As they've got me sat in a chair, just sat there in a, call it a hospital bed. We're keeping you over. Be a plastic chair in a corridor. Next to a little shelf with a heart machine on it. Made me sign to say, they, 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 they produced this piece of paper, which I didn't get a copy of. They didn't give me a copy of it where I signed off against medical advice and the, the piece of paper said, suffering from heart failure. So man suffering from heart failure gets up, right? 
gathers his stuff, goes out to the fire, rings himself a taxi, gets in the taxi, goes home, makes a sandwich, goes to bed, doesn't die, wakes up in the morning, fresh as a daisy, six o'clock right now, and I know tomorrow I'm going to have, or today I'm going to have, a psychodrama where my family side with the doctors and say, you have to go back to hospital and you have to go on the chemical cosh. I'm not going. It's like, no, just go back to no healthcare, no NHS. It doesn't matter what happens. You either live or you die. You don't go to them because they'll put you in the fucking ground. Can you imagine that? Someone who's apparently suffered from, they think, a massive heart attack. And they won't feed me. They won't give me anything to drink. And they won't give me a bed. No, you're going to have to wait. So you're going to keep me up all night? We're observing you. You're observing me by stressing me out, putting me on medication, not giving me any food. What kind of medicine is this? And the response to that kind of, that, that diatribe was, well, I haven't had anything to eat today. You believe that? Doctor, I haven't had anything to eat today. And he says, look at it around here. Can't you see? It's like we're rushed off our feet and these people have fucking stood around. Yeah, yeah, you know. The, the shift finished at 8 o'clock, right? They're all stood there in the courts talking, waiting to go home at quarter to 8. Waiting a clock out. They're all there. And he said, Kate, you see we're rushed off our feet. We haven't got time to breathe here. I'm like, there's nothing going on here. It's, just, it's stressed in his head. He says, if you don't like it, well, why don't you vote for Labour in the next general election? Like, this guy's a doctor. He was histrionic. He was a bitch. Panicking. And, like, trying to be a doomer. It's like, and then, um... The, they, they don't... The right. The, uh, uh, this is what I come with. This, this whole when it happened the first time. For me, it was such an incredible eye-opener as to these people just think they're psychic. They're mind readers. They're not interested in getting to the truth of anything. They're not listening. And it's like, um, you, you, me being as the, uh, saying, look, you're not right and I don't need to go on the pills and I'm not dying. You know, when they first pulled this on me, I could play 90 minutes twice a week football. I was in good shape. It might be said that maybe I enjoyed a few too many pints, but a few too many pints was offset with a lot of exercise I used to do. Fair enough, I used to work indoors. I used to be in the sales office, but it'd be like at least one night a week, it'd be straight from work to go and play football for a couple of hours. And then it'd be playing twice at weekend, football. And it's like, do you know how much wear and tear there is on a guy who plays football and, can, and plays 90 minutes? Center abs have to play 90 minutes. There's no subs for you. <laughs> so it's like, I can play football for 90 minutes, but you're telling me I'm a dying man who's not going to live until he's 35, not, who's not going to make it till 35 in the best case scenario and could just drop down dead at any minute. They told me this when I were 26. I'm 48 now, 49 tomorrow. And I go back to the hospital, they take me blood pressure and they tell me exactly the same again and nobody can sway them. Oh, we've got to put you on the fucking strong brain medicine. Why? Because your high blood pressure could lead to a stroke. Because high blood pressure can't kill you. Not on of its own, not on its own. Something else might happen 
as to where your high blood pressure pushes a plaque into your brain, gives you a stroke. It's like, does happen, you know, hasn't happened yet, but happens to most people late in life, doesn't it? You hear of these days, people have strokes. People have always had strokes. Stroke be a thing. Stroke used to be a serious problem. Stroke's potentially a serious problem for me because I live on my own and there's no one to spot the signs of it. If other people can spot that, like, Jesus, half your face has dropped. Like you've got like Bell, Bell's palsy or something. If you, if, if, if you aren't around to see it, you don't notice it. It's like you can have serious damage from a stroke. You can have like oh, nerve damage and stuff like that. But if obviously someone sees that you've got the early onset signs of it, you can go to A&E. Whereas I'd go to A&E having a stroke and they'd say, well, he's suffering from heart failure. Why? Because of his high blood pressure. He's sweating and he's got high blood pressure. That tells us that his heart is he's dead. It's, it's failing. His heart's failed. So my heart has been in a a perpetual state of failure now for 20 years, according to the NHS. Do you think somebody might have got it wrong? And do you think somebody might one day, who works for that organisation, actually go and do some fucking research? <sighs> Yesterday, me, diagnosed by four doctors based on the ECG and the blood pressure, that's all. Predicted it before I walked in and that's exactly what it was. And it's like, they're a waste of time to me. They will not address the problem of the sharpness of breath. Now, I can probably address that myself by stopping smoking, or at least, Cutting it right back. I know what I can do to, to make it better. Uh, if I could get out of this flat, which is just damp, that'd help too because I never have any shortness of breath problems when I'm not here. But it's like the NHS will not investigate the possibility whether I've got a like a breathing problem like to do with lungs and ting until they manage the blood pressure which isn't a problem the drugs they put me on to control it will not reduce it there'd be nothing nothing at all it's the best line as soon as I got to understand that that I'm not dying right I started to live, but I lived under the cloud for a couple of years of this Well, you could just drop down dead at any minute and I'm always, forever, forever saying, you, well, you're dying, you've got heart failure. We don't know why you're alive. So you get no treatment for nothing else. If I, if I decide, right, okay, I'll uh, leave this for a week or two and I'll just go to, I'll book a GP appointment and say, I'm having problems with sharpness of breath, right? It'll take me blood pressure. It's like you're sweating, but you don't have a high temperature. So when they see sweat, they think it means fever, not that you've got someone who's gone from being outside with a coat on, because it's cold, to coming inside where it's, like heating on full and lights shining down and you start to get well a bit the environment when the environment changes i sweat right when they they see sweat they think that means fever in everybody but you've got no you, you're sweating but you've got no temperature uh, yes because i'm just sweating All oh, right, and I'm, I'm like, well, I'm like that. It's like when I get when there's a temperature change, so I, I I break a sweat easy. This has been a a feature of being me since I was a child. I if it's hot, I sweat. If there's a change in environment, I sweat. It's it's a, called a cooling system. It's like 
I'm a little bit different than other people. It's like, I can explain it to you if you like, but are you going to listen? And it actually all comes down to um, a constitution, what I'm made of. I'm a little bit more conductive, so I transfer heat a little bit more quickly. And that's what it is. It's a heat transfer. It's it's cooling system. They, they don't listen to me. No, no, you're sweating. That means you're having an heart. It means you're suffering from heart failure. Do you like how this goes round and round and round and round and round and round and round? You see how my life's been sabotaged by it. Like, the NHS. They don't listen to you. They think they already know. They just don't listen. It's like, we've, uh, we, we're we going to check out what you said. We're going to pull your medical records and see if you've been through all this before. Oh, so I'm lying to you, am I? Okay, right, so you're going to pull me medical records to see that I'm not lying. Because you, you're accusing me of lying about not being in uh, acute chest pain. So I'm like, so how long is that going to take? Oh, well, we've requested your records, so it's take about five, six days. Excuse me? Yeah, well, you're staying in anyway, so there's no rush. As I'm sat on my blue plastic chair in a corridor. It's like, there's things I know that they don't know, right? And one of them is, there's worse things than being dead. Worse things. And to be under the care of those idiots who've got a vested interest in putting you on pills for the rest of your life saying that you're going to die with it convincing them that you will die without them that's real high on the list of things they do to people like me like <laughs> it be right I'm supposed to say round in circles they think I've had a massive heart attack. So they stress me all day. Don't feed me. Don't give me anything to drink. Don't tell me what's going on. Don't provide me with anywhere to be. And just, in essence, it's all of them tell me over and over again that, well, you'll probably be dead in the next 24 hours. The next two days. Because your high blood pressure so, and, and the sweating, you 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 you're suffering from heart failure. We know you you just not you just you just you're in denial, which again is is proof of your high blood pressure because we can see you're getting annoyed and uh, high blood pressure and rage as they anyone who anyone who in any way eye rolls reacts says come on, they accuse of rage. And if they've got something that says high blood pressure, well, this proves that we're right. And that's the reasoning they throw at you. It's like, um, if any of my viewers out there are a doctor, a real one, an actual doctor, that isn't tied in with that childish uh, uh, histrionic um, imbecilic uh, death organization you get in contact with me I would, I would travel to be examined by someone real 